when I was talking about family pill, the importance of family, I said that there should be a parenting license and some people were criticizing that. Oh, what are you saying, dude? That is basically eugenics. That is unethical. <laughs> Look, obviously rejected application paper was a meme, but I do believe that not everybody should have children. That part is not a joke. Of course, not in an autistic way like, oh, you have one millimeter upper eyelid exposure or you are shorter than 6'2", you can't have children, but I do believe believe that if you lack certain cognitive abilities, if you can't even take care of yourself financially, if you have certain genetic diseases, you shouldn't have children. Passing that suffering to another human who didn't consent to it. You might be okay with that genetic disease and suffering, but the kid might not be. You should have a certain sense of responsibility. And if you want to call it eugenics, fine, whatever. Eugenics is already happening, whether we want it or not. And it has been happening for thousands of years. You can't stop it. It is engraved in human nature. That is how we were able to adapt and survive as a species and managed to overcome different difficulties at different ages. Not forced eugenics like it was implemented in the last century by United States and Germany. Eugenics literally means good genes in Latin. Eugenics is what makes us survive as a species. You either spread your wings and fly or hit the ground and die. And it has been this way since forever. But now this process is gonna go even faster with the embryo screening and selection. Guys, pregnation through IVF is not something new. Test tube babies have been around for a while now. But with newer tech, they can now screen embryos, screen it for certain diseases, qualities and traits, and select a specific embryo to transfer during IVF. Like, imagine, you get mad when I say parenting license, but in reality, eugenics has been practiced by people, consciously or not. And now it is gonna go even faster. Recently, Weiss made a video about it too. This time, the Cassidy's got pregnant using IVF, so they could use a genetic test to screen out for the disorder. Soon, they found out they could also screen for all kinds of common diseases. I have type 1 diabetes and I would do anything to not pass that burden along. There's most likely a misconception out there that when people hear genetic testing, I'm sure they're thinking immediately, trying to make your child the next LeBron James or the next Elon Musk. And that's not what this is at all. I think every parent, you know, just wants to bring a healthy child. Now, this part is important. You can't just choose whatever traits you want in your children, like you are creating a video game character. Obviously, the chances and choices are ultimately gonna get determined by the genetic makeup of the couple. You can't just get one fem cell and one oofy doofy and just tell the doctor, hey doc, just choose the embryo with 6-7 height and 200 IQ. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. <laughs> Brother, there is no such embryo in you. <laughs> Sorry, but even the best part of you, best part of your genes ain't up too much. Come oofy doofy, go oofy doofy. It's routine for doctors to test fetuses and embryos for cystic fibrosis, as well as other diseases caused by a mutation in a single gene. But the Cassidy's used a new type of polygenic test that screens for conditions caused by multiple genes. It's called PGTP and it works by collecting biopsies from embryos and then testing them for their risk of developing diseases. These are the results that they give you, and it just says the likelihood of type 1 diabetes, type 2, and then it goes down the list. Testicular cancer, prostate cancer, a couple types of uh, melanoma, hypertension, and schizophrenia, among other things. PGTP is controversial because no one knows how accurate its predictions will be. So far, fewer than 100 babies have been born to families who used it. The technology has been on the market for three years, offered by just one company, Genomic Prediction. But diseases aren't the only thing polygenic testing can screen for. Some parents are excited about using the technology to optimize their embryos for all kinds of things, like mental health or intellectual ability. Simone and Malcolm Collins are entrepreneurs who believe that happiness itself is genetic. Some people are just happier on average than other people. And if we can give our daughter a better shot in terms of her mood throughout her life, I, I don't know, I feel a moral imperative to do that. 
Like the Cassidys, the Collins also use genomic prediction to analyze and rank their embryo's disease risk. Then, they downloaded the raw data and paid a DNA analysis company called Self Decode to get even more predictions, like whether the embryos could be adept at managing stress or suffer from brain fog or depression. And that is the thing. Once you open that door, it will constantly beg the question, who gets to determine what is ethical and what is not? If you get to choose an embryo with a lower risk of diabetes, if that is ethical, because it is going to increase the life quality of your child. For my child, I will select the embryo with taller height. That is going to increase his life quality as well. Less likely to commit suicide. I will pick the embryo with a higher expected IQ and stuff. Once you open that door, it will constantly beg the question. If you just outlaw screening for anything other than diseases, official diseases, then people are going to do it under the table. It is already an expensive procedure. Rich people will just pay some private clinic in Dubai and get it done there. Rich people are going to find a way around it. They can't stop the process. Nobody can. You couldn't stop it 100,000 years ago and you can't stop it now. Put that through your head. A kid with blue eyes will be like, wait, it is only my grandma in the family who has blue eyes. And I turned out to have blue eyes. What are the chances, huh? Except your parents didn't leave it to chance. You might not like it when I say this, but it is exactly what is going to happen. People already do this. Just look at sperm bank stats. People might want to come off as politically correct all they want, but their actions reveal their sins. This is simply what is already happening in the real world. And it is exactly what happened 10,000 years ago. All people, all the people with blue eyes today on Earth are descended from one, one common ancestor who lived six to 10,000 years ago, who had blue eyes because of a unique genetic mutation. It didn't die out, but instead spread all over the globe. Why? You are going to ask why, when so many other traits and mutations died out. And the reason is this, you couldn't stop it 100,000 years ago, you couldn't stop it 6,000 years ago, and you can't stop it now. Simple as that. The Titan here, who turned out to be the, the one we selected, had the best score from our own internal, uh, like additional data calculations, and genomic predictions best. Oh my gosh, hey Titan, you're number one. <laughs> so wait, Titan, is that her name? Titan Invictus. They named their Titan Invictus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is a rich person's name, if I ever seen one. <laughs> Not even on the Titan, Titan Invictus. Invincible Titan. Sounds like an anime villain. I swear, only rich people do this shit. It is like an unwritten rule among them. Wait, we can't name our child an Ufi Dufi name. Same name as the children of people we look down on. No, we will name her Titan Invictus. Such a pretentious cringe name. What would you like to test for that isn't currently available on the market? IQ is the big one. Yeah. I think that that's educational the... attainment, IQ, yeah. earning potential. Like there are polygenic oh, risk scores potential. related to these. Why do you think that it's not on the market? Polygenic risk scores for things like IQ or educational attainment. It's spicy. It's very spicy. It's spicy. As soon as a company comes out and says, we allow you to select for heights or intelligence or anything that's like, that seems evil, uh, or correlates with evil, um, then someone's going to come out and say they're a eugenicist, they're a Nazi, whatever. And she's right. Even under my video, when I suggested that parenting license, some people were like, oh, that is eugenics, that is unethical. Man, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Your parents should have done some of that. Like, think about it. If you want to drive, they require you to have a license because if you don't know how to do it properly, you might endanger lives of others, right? The same applies to parenting also. If you are not qualified to do it, your child might endanger the lives of others. Their actions have a direct impact in our lives as well. But to many people, polygenic testing is an ethical minefield. Rich patients optimizing their children's genes for success reminds people of a dystopian society, like the 90s sci-fi film Gattaca. None of that's happening yet, but it's not because the science isn't there. It's because the only company on the market so far is only testing for diseases. And right when a patient comes in and, and they tell you that they have diabetes, I think it's unethical not to tell them that you can actually test your embryos for risk of diabetes. And I would be angry if I found out there was a test like that and that nobody told me about it. 
Would genomic prediction ever go into testing for traits beyond diseases? No. Doc, you can't stop this. It will constantly beg the question. If you don't do it, some guy is gonna open a private clinic offshore in some legal haven country like Dubai and get it done there. And you will come around sooner or later anyway. When everybody starts taking their money abroad, the United States will have to make legal changes to let it happen as well. The money, it is all about the money. When this thing becomes bigger and they realize some significant money starts to fly out, they will allow it in the States as well. Make no mistake about it. Where do you think this technology is going? Well, it's only going to get better. In the future, it'll seem silly that we didn't use this when there's an opportunity to do it. I also think that it's quite possible that this very limited menu of things is sort of a starter place. There is sort of a nervousness around turning reproduction into this highly commercial enterprise where people are looking to um, get their hands on a certain type of child. Thing you learn when you're in this field is the future comes very fast. And once something is entrenched, it's very hard to either get rid of it or change expectations or uh, alter people's thoughts about what is and isn't appropriate. So the time to discuss it is, is right now. 100% man. Once you open that door, you can't close it. Rich people are gonna go after it. Inevitable. And only the beginning. The future is here, guys. Rebecca is the second generation of her family with achondroplasia, the most common form of dwarfism. I was in the White House for two and a half years as President Obama's chief diversity officer. It was an incredible experience. In August of 2017, she published an editorial about genetic engineering and prenatal diagnosis. That my children may end up being the last generation of people like them. Where do you draw the line though? If a person with the same disease don't want to pass it down to their child, who are you to say, oh no, you can't edit us out? Just like you have a right to choose, other people with dwarfism should also have a right to choose. Oh no, you can't edit us out in the lab. Because if you let it happen, she knows what is going to happen. She knows that most dwarf people will not want their children to be dwarfs. It shatters her delusion about her situation. She sees it as a diversity that must be protected by the state. But many people with the same condition don't see it as diversity. You gotta respect that. And you can't stop this. Nobody can. Not her, not the president, nobody. You couldn't stop it 100,000 years ago, and you can't now. In the early 1900s, the American eugenics movement arose as a response to increased immigration and rapid social change. New York City was now a restless and thriving metropolis. People are moving from farms to cities, and there's a lot of poverty and crime. So a number of scientists became convinced that this was the result of hereditary feeble-mindedness. And you could actually improve the human race by controlling their heredity. By the way, by eugenics, I mean dictionary meaning of it. I don't mean it as how the United States and Germany tried to implement it in the last century. That is not what I'm talking about. I am talking in an evolutionary sense. It is not going to happen again, like the government putting people in camps and sterilizing them. But we are already moving in a direction where higher IQ people, the rich, the higher status people will increase this genetic gap between them and the rest of people even more in the near future. This gap already exists. Good genes come in a package. According to multiple studies, facially attractive people are more likely to have a higher IQ. It was found that facial attractiveness is a better indicator of your intelligence than the education level of your parents. It had a bigger correlation. And not only that, a more meaningful correlation as well. Oh no, all the chats in my school are airheads. Bro, book smarts and nerding out is not how studies define intelligence. They define intelligence as innate problem-solving ability, overall mental capacity. The dumb, blonde, bimbo stereotypes exist because when you live an easy life, you don't have to try your hardest to sharpen your innate skills or have to learn how to use them. You just cruise through life. Just like how captive lions don't know how to hunt. It doesn't mean they don't have the innate ability to hunt. They just never learned it. This gap, the advantage the fortunate people have at birth, will only keep increasing and increase exponentially faster. I mean, it is inevitable, man. But I will talk to you in the next one.